Welcome back to the Simple Steps to Sentence Sense video series. Analyzing English sentences is simple if you follow eight simple steps in order. Hello everyone, this is Charlene Tess and this is step six in the series, Phrases. If you haven't watched the first five videos, you need to click out of this one and go back and watch the other videos in order. Because in order to be successful in the Simple Steps to Sentence Sense series, you must do the steps in order. If you do, everything is very, very easy. If you have watched the first five videos, then you're ready for this one, step six finding the phrases. Let's begin with prepositional phrases. Now you've already studied those in step one. Since you learned to find a prepositional phrase in step one and you learn to find adjectives and adverbs in step five, it will be easy for you to determine the function of the prepositional phrase in a sentence because a prepositional phrase will be used as an adjective or an adverb. So after you locate it, you would use the questions that adjectives and adverbs answer to determine the phrase's function. Adjectives answer the questions which one, what kind, and how many. Adverbs answer the questions when, where, why, how, and to what extent and under what condition. For example, the bush in the backyard blooms in the spring. Now we know the phrases are in the backyard and in the spring. So now we're going to use the questions to determine whether the phrase is being used as an adjective or as an adverb. In the backyard answers the question, which one? Which bush? In the backyard. So this is an adjective phrase. In the spring, answers the question when because it tells you when it blooms. So this one is being used as an adverb phrase. Verbal phrases are phrases that are uh, contained verbs and besides the prepositional phrase this is, these are three other types of phrases that you might find in a sentence. They're formed from verbs but they're not being used as verbs, they're being used as other parts of speech. And that sounds complicated, but it isn't. It's really very simple. The three verbals are participles, gerunds, and infinitives. And we're going to look at them separately so that you'll understand them. A participle is a verb that is used as an adjective. It usually ends in ing, en, ed, or d. For instance, the developing storm looks dangerous. See, it ends in ing. And it's telling you what kind of storm. So developing is an adjective. But it's not an ordinary adjective because it's, it's made from a verb. All right, now here's an example of a participial phrase. The storm developing rapidly looks dangerous. This participial phrase that modifies storm is made up of the participle developing and the adverb rapidly. Notice that the participle and the participial phrase should be placed as close as possible to the noun or pronoun that it modifies. If it's placed incorrectly, you can create a misplaced modifier, often called a dangling participle. Note this example of a dangling participle. Nailed to the tree, I saw the no trespassing sign. Obviously that could be very painful. Now the way that you would correct this would be to put the participial phrase nailed to the tree right after the word sign because that's what it modifies. I saw the no trespassing sign nailed to the tree. 
So that time it makes sense instead of I being nailed to the tree, the sign is nailed to the tree. If you're using participles in your writing, always check to be sure that you haven't created some kind of a strange or funny picture. The second type of verbal phrase is called a gerund. A gerund is a verb that is used as a noun and it always ends in ing, so it's pretty easy to find it. A gerund will function in the sentence just as a noun does and it may be used as the subject, the direct object, the indirect object, the predicate nominative, or the object of the preposition. A gerund phrase may contain a gerund, modifiers, prepositional phrases, or an object of the gerund. For example, skating is my hobby. Skating is the gerund and it's used as the subject because if you said what is my hobby, the answer is skating. She enjoys singing in the choir. She enjoys what? Singing in the choir is a gerund phrase that's used as the direct object. Now notice that within the gerund phrase, there's a prepositional phrase, in the choir. His favorite exercise is walking briskly in the park at noon. Now here the gerund phrase follows a linking verb, so it's being used as a predicate nominative. Walking is the gerund. Briskly is an adverb that modifies the gerund. It tells you how he's walking. In the park and at noon are prepositional phrases that tells you where and when he is walking. He won the game by kicking a field goal. Now notice that directly in front of the gerund is a preposition. So this prepositional phrase, excuse me, this gerund phrase is being used as the object of the preposition. Here are some hints to determine the function of a gerund phrase. Because after you find it, you must decide, is it being used as the subject, the direct object, or what is it? Well, it's pretty simple. Look at where it is in the sentence. If there is a preposition right in front of it, then most likely this gerund is the object of the preposition. If you don't find that scenario there, then check the verb. If it's in front of the verb, it's the subject, most likely. If it follows an action verb, it's the direct object. If it follows a linking verb, it's going to be a predicate nominative. So if you follow these hints, it's very easy to determine the function of the gerund phrase. Note, since both participles and gerunds end in ing, sometimes it's uh, difficult to figure out which one is which and you have to know. So to distinguish between a participle ending in ing and a gerund, just try removing the ing word or the phrase from the sentence. For instance, dancing is good exercise and the dancing dogs were popular at the circus. Now which one can you remove? Only the one in the second sentence because if you remove dancing in the first sentence, the sentence falls apart. So a participle can be removed because it's an adjective, but a gerund cannot. A gerund is a key word in a sentence because it functions as a noun. So if you see an ing word, just try removing it from the sentence. And remember, a gerund cannot be removed and a participle can. The third type of verbal is an infinitive. An infinitive is a verb that is generally used as a noun but it can also be used as an adjective or an adverb. It is usually introduced by the word to. For example, 
To when is his ambition? Here, if you're looking for the subject of the sentence and you say, what is his ambition? The answer is, to win. He lacked the will to live. Here, the infinitive to live is telling you what kind of will. So it's an adjective. It answers an adjective question. What kind? We learn, excuse me, we read to learn. To learn tells you why we read. So here, to learn is being used as an adverb. Sometimes the word to is understood or implied. For example, help me mow the lawn actually means help me to mow the lawn. And here, it's at the end of the sentence. It answers the question, what, help what? So it's a direct object. An infinitive phrase may contain an infinitive modifiers, prepositional phrases, or an object of the infinitive. For example, I know there is a way to solve this problem. This is an infinitive phrase that is used as an adjective modifying way. It tells you what kind of way or which way. To solve is the infinitive, this is an adjective, and problem is the object of the infinitive. Now because these verbal phrases have a verb, always have a verb, they can also have an object. And you don't call it a direct object, you call it the object of the infinitive or the object of the gerund. Note, do not confuse the infinitive with a prepositional phrase beginning with two. An infinitive is followed by a verb. A preposition is followed by a noun or a pronoun. So for instance, I wanted to sing. Sing is a verb, so that's an infinitive. I went to church. Church is a noun, so that is a prepositional phrase. So you can tell what it is after you find the word to by checking the word that follows. If it's a verb, it's an infinitive. If it's a noun or pronoun, it's a prepositional phrase. And the final type of phrase that we're going to study is called the appositive. An appositive is a noun that renames, explains, or identifies another noun. For example, Mr. Smith, my teacher, is kind. The appositive, teacher, renames the noun Mr. Smith. An appositive phrase consists of the appositive and its modifiers. And you will notice that when there's an appositive, it has commas, a comma before and a comma after to set it off from the rest of the sentence because it's just additional information. You could say, Mr. Smith is kind and still have a sentence. But my teacher gives you additional information that renames or explains who Mr. Smith is. Here are examples of a positive phrases. Ricky Nelson, a teenage idol in the 50s, died in a plane crash. Janis Joplin, a popular singer in the 60s, died of an accidental overdose. So we could say Ricky Nelson died in a plane crash, but the additional information in the appositive phrase tells you who he was. And the same is true of Janis Joplin. Here we know who she is. So remember that appositives uh, add information to the sentence. So here we have the phrases that we have studied in this lesson. Prepositional phrases, which you know how to find. You've been looking for those since step one. Now we have the verbal phrases, participial phrases, gerund phrases, and infinitive phrases. And then the final phrase, the appositive phrase. All of them are easy to find and easy to work with now that you know what you know about them. 
If you want to practice this step and learn even more about phrases, just visit my store at TeachersPayTeachers.com or just Google my name to find my books. In the next step, step 7, I'll teach you how to identify and construct independent and dependent clauses. So please join me and watch the next video. Thank you for listening.